welcome everybody. We have a great panel set up for you guys. Uh, our leader of the panel, and also the famous leader of the Jackson Hole bus, Brady Adams, <laughs> Chief, Chief Product Officer of Stu Kent, is going to lead the panel. Our panelists, moving from left to right, we have, um, we're right, actually, they're sitting in opposite order of my actual uh, presentation, so we'll have to figure this out. Ryan, <laughs> we all know Ryan, if you've been in the other room, the king of dad jokes. Uh, but there's something more to Ryan than just his dad jokes. He's an associate, professor, associate lecturer of marketing at the University of Tennessee Chattanooga and a 12-year veteran of social media and digital strategy. He has extensive experience crafting powerful digital strategies, growing active online communities, and generating engaging, consistent digital advertising and bringing this to his class. So welcome, Ryan. <laughs> Next, we have Lisa. Lisa Coleman is an associate professor in the School of Business of Southern Adventist University in College Dale, Tennessee. So we have a real good Tennessee representation here. Um, her specialty areas are marketing and professional development coursework. And prior to joining academia, Lisa worked for Booz Allen Hamilton as a consultant developing websites for a variety of federal clients. And finally, and not last but not least, Rebecca Cooney is the Les Smith Distinguished Professor of Communication at Washington State University, not Tennessee. She teaches in courses in branding, advertising, and digital marketing, leads undergraduate assessment efforts from Moreau College, and serves as a co-investigator on a grant focused on interactions between natural products and prescription drugs. Let's welcome our panelists. Awesome. Well, first and foremost, let's give a huge round of applause for both Rich and Ryan as MCs for ProfCon. And uh, all speakers, keynotes, breakout sessions, let's give them a round of applause. It's been great so far. Uh, marketing team, those that are here, huge round of applause for our marketing team for coordinating ProfCon. And then a special round of applause for the Jackson Hole Bus. Uh, represent! Thank you. There we go. We had, we had way more fun than the West Yellowstone Bus. In duration, by saying way more, just the duration. Yes. Uh, quality, quality of company was also top notch. Uh, so speaking of uh, the Jackson Hole trip, uh, I was having dinner with uh, Brandon Anderson, uh, and we were having a conversation around resumes, right? And he, he, he brought up this example where he said we had somebody applying for a job who had an MBA and had all of this uh, you know, their experience that they had on their resume. And they took one of his students and they took that resume. They whited out, you know, some of the indicators that would have made it that this was a student and this was somebody that was applying for the job. And there wasn't much difference between the two, right? And uh, that, you know, huge credit to his program and some of the experiences they're giving their students. Uh, but, you know, so much of what all of your students are going up against is that, hey, we need, we need two to five years of experience in an entry level position, and they're competing against everybody that looks exactly like them, right? So here at Sukint, that's you know, a, a big part of our vision for how we want to use and leverage our simulations and why it's so important that we feel like we're creating simturnships to be paired with courseware. It is that hands on experience that. Uh, gives students an opportunity to practice the things that they're learning in your, in your classes, an opportunity to gain resume-relevant skills that then can, they can use to articulate who they are as a potential candidate. So important to us. We, we, uh, during Stu's keynote, he shared with you the video where we had our uh, actress Abby and uh, Scott kind of that mock interview type of a situation, right? That's our vision for how simturnships are gonna benefit your students, how it's gonna benefit their resume, right? Your students, they need as many experiences as possible, even in the classroom, so when they graduate, they might be closer to that two to three years of experience that uh, you know, a potential robot that's reading a resume is going to be looking for, right? So that's, what, that's how we feel about simturnships and why it's so important that we're, uh, as an education technology innovator, trying to provide you as educators that opportunity to in, in, include those in the classroom. Uh, but that's our word for it, right? And that's why we have these amazing panelists today, your peers, to talk through 
simternships and what are some of the best practices, how they're using them, success stories. Um, so let's jump right into it. Uh, first question, uh, and I'm going to start, we'll start with Ryan this time and make our way this way. Have you noticed any significant improvements in student engagement and motivation since incorporating simternships into your curriculum? If so, how? Um, yeah, in, integrating as guys, uh, in my course evaluations, regularly uh, the simternship is listed as the top thing of the semester. Um, I take that as a compliment, not as, as a fault on any of my teaching. Uh, it's incredible because it gives them something to put on their resume. Uh, I draw so much inspiration for, uh, from what Scott has, has shared over the past few prof cons of how to explain that. I really was thankful, Stu, for the video that you guys made because uh, of internet, or excuse me, interview coaching uh, on that. I mean, that's outstanding. Uh, but, but what these simternships um, give them the availability to do is, I mean, it, it, what it does is it, it levels the playing field uh, as far as access goes. Uh, at, at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, uh, just like uh, many of you guys, uh, we teach a lot of low-income and, and first-generation college students. Um, access can be a challenge um, with that. Uh, moms and dads don't always know the right people to get the kiddo the internship. Uh, the kiddo doesn't know how to apply for said internship. Kiddo might not know what a marketing agency even is in order to apply for said internship. What the simternship allows them to do uh, is to have their hands on more than just uh, learning from a textbook, more than just reading it, more than just looking at screenshots. It allows them to get their hands dirty, right? Uh, it, it allows them to fail, and, and as Stu says frequently, fail in a safe place, and to see the consequences of those failures, though. Oh my goodness, I didn't use all of my budget. What am I gonna do? Uh, why? I'm mad. Uh, Ryan, you suck, you know? <laughs> But we get to have those conversations in the classroom, and we don't have to have those conversations after they graduate. So absolutely engagement is increased with these internships. Um, I see students uh, get excited with them. Uh, they're able to talk about this uh, in, in their entry-level jobs. It's outstanding. Uh, because of our internships uh, that, that we've done at the University of Chattanooga, uh, through, uh, through Mimic Pro especially, um, we have several students who, who work at uh, large agencies, we've got uh, two that work in the search engine optimization and SEM department at Tombras, who was just named Ad Ages Agency of the Year uh, for the globe. Um, and they trace their experience down to the engagement that they got from Mimic Pro, uh, even in their third, fourth year uh, at, at this agency. So uh, without a doubt, absolutely lean into these things. Awesome. Lisa, go ahead. Sure. Um, Making sure you guys can hear me. There we go. Okay. Um, I agree. Absolutely, Brian. Um, the students, it's a, we're, our university is a small Christian university. It's about 35, 3,700 students. So we have a little bit smaller um, group of students than at UTC. But uh, the engagement with the students has been significant. Through all the marketing classes I've used the same term sheets in, which includes digital marketing, consumer behavior, integrated marketing communication. I mean, I'm, I'm a sim internship fan, right? Um, but one aspect of it that we haven't talked about very much during this conference is marketing the degree to other majors. Um, I teach an intro to business class. Anybody in your department teach a business 101 or anything like that? One of the best tools is that simulation because I have students come in that are psychology majors, social work majors, um, health and kines kinesiology majors, whatever they are, and they go through that internship and figure out all the different areas of business that they could work in and see all the different types of decisions that they might have to make in those roles. And I have five people, six people in every class, which is a class of about 45, come to me and say, you know, I really want to minor in marketing next semester. Or, you know, I, I really think that I need to add a major, maybe a business admin major, another major to go along with my career path because I think this is really important to me. So there's another aspect, it, not just the job pieces of it, which is really important and very helpful. Um, I have another student who started her own marketing agency, Reka Lou. I don't know if you've known Reka Lou, Abby Choi. Um, and she started that agency while she was in my digital marketing class and we stepped through a lot of stuff together and she came back last year and talked to my class and told them the simulation is one of the first and major things that really helped me prepare 
to have my own agency. So um, she's doing fantastic things in the Chattanooga area, so it's really exciting to see that. Okay, so I teach a 4-4 load, um, which means four classes in the fall, four classes in the spring. Sometimes I have to explain that to people. I teach both in person and online, both undergraduate and graduate. So simulations or sem internships I'm using in both my in-person undergraduate and my online graduate. So just to give you a little context. Um, I would say Stu Kent was after me for about three years before I took the plunge. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I was nervous. If I'm honest, the reason that I'm doing some internships is because another faculty redesigned the course I'm teaching, and I had no choice. That's what's real. So, but I fell in love, so here we are. Um, on student engagement and motivation, um, absolutely. Uh, it's, so I have a simulation support group in my LMS, and it's for the students, and it was student-born because they were asking me so many questions and they were freaking out and they didn't know what to do. And I finally solicited for other students to be peer mentors to each other. I had some volunteers and then I just created the community and they went nuts. And they started doing uh, student created content. I have one student who's like a YouTuber on the Mimic social simulation round seven through nine. Those of you out there who might know what I'm talking about. And she, um, she went from zero followers to, I think, 2,000 followers in a day from that post. So high engagement. And I would also say that, um, I mean, I have some quotes that I could read to you, or maybe you'll share them, because we share them, that are just from, uh, I do a final prompt at the end of my graduate course where I ask them specifically to share what they thought they knew, what they learned, and what they want to know more about as far as getting um, what they got out of the course. Simulation, top mention thing. Awesome, thank you for that. <clears throat> okay, question number two. That one's a, yeah, you were gonna start with you this time, Rebecca. Can you provide examples, that's really loud, that's louder than the other one. Um, can you provide examples of how simternships have helped your students develop critical thinking, problem solving, and decision making skills? I sure can, and I wrote them down. Okay, so I have this student named Caitlin, real quiet sweetie, who um, was one of those people that was in the class, and this is an in-person undergrad, came to class most days, um, participated, was kind, was sweet, understated, and then at the end, she emerged. And so this was a person who was really quiet and not very uh, confident, and she came up to me and said, this internship has completely changed how I do things, how I focus, how I, how I learn, you've changed my life. Um, and I, I, I put her name forward for a really coveted, highly competitive volleyball internship, a marketing internship with the volleyball team. She got it, and it was because of this internship, just saying. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Um, I think most of my students, I think the internships are really good, especially for your more not your extroverts, your introverts in, in many ways, I think, because it gives them that opportunity to make those decisions and be, and be really confident in what they're doing. Sometimes not so confident, right? I mean, sometimes the rounds kind of don't go their way at all, and then they just question everything. But that's okay, because I think that's important for them to do that, and especially before they actually get in the workplace, because you know, we talked about you know, having these skills before you're actually losing a million dollars for your client, right? I mean, not maybe that much, but still. It, it gives them those skill sets and makes them a little bit more confident when they go in the workplace. And so I've had a number of students that come up and say, you know, I'm really struggling here. And I'm like, well, have you thought about this? And what about this area? And, and then they go back and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, that really made a difference. It really changed the whole level of playing field. And so um, it really does enhance their critical thinking and makes them really look at the problem from different perspectives. Absolutely, I echo uh, both. Uh, I mean, I think that as, as many of you probably noticed as well, critical thinking skills uh, can be a big challenge, right? Especially for, for Gen Z. Uh, you know, chat GPT, we should have started a drinking game with uh, any mention of it in this conference uh, so far. <laughs> I think we all would have been staggering. Um, yeah. But you know, uh, chat GPT and BARD, they're only as good as the prompt they're given. Right, um, And so kids are going to need critical thinking skills now more than ever, or else it's just going to lead you to the wrong direction really, really well. Uh, right? So the fact that the, the, the critical thinking skills that SIM internships uh, make you do, 
I mean, goodness gracious, maybe this is the wrong thing to do, uh, but I give them the wrong advice intentionally sometimes so that the smart kids do poorly on it because we need to figure out why, right? Why did what happened happen, right? Why did I not spend all of my budget on Mimic Pro? I swear I put the budget in there. Why, oh, why, oh, why? Right? Well, because, you know, you're used to thinking on a budget, you know, maybe you're from a low-income family and you're used to, you're wanting the clicks to be cheaper or something like that. And so you bid below the average thinking that you were going to game the system like that. When in reality, you left fruit on the tree. Right? Why did you not use all of budget? Why did you, uh, you know, use the verbiage that you did? Why did you bid on the products that you did? Uh, right? So it makes them think through those things beyond simply memorizing, you know, having rote memorization and multiple choice uh, tests and things like that. It puts, it puts those things that they learned into practice. Uh, and so it's one of the reasons I'm incredibly grateful for the internships. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, one thing Lisa mentioned, you know, when, when we look at a internship, right? Like th there's nothing like a student sitting across the table from an actual client or during their internship and having to say, you know what? I, I decided not to do my work over the weekend because I was really, I was really busy with other things, right? Like that accountability, like we can't replace that in a simulation, but can we give them the experience where they're engaged and they're interested and they're excited and they're practicing, they're developing these critical thinking skills so that they're better prepared for that actual internship? So they're better prepared for that first job where it's like, oh wow, I remember that one time that I crashed and burned really, really hard in this internship. I don't want to do that again. I better pay extra close attention to how my, my, my uh, bids need to be more competitive, right? Like, that's the benefit of a simternship is we're giving them as close to that real life experience as possible so they're better prepared for the actual internship, the actual job. All right, let's move into the next question. The next one I want to ask is how do simternships contribute to bridging the gap between theoretical concepts taught in class and practical application in the field? Goodness gracious, I mean, that's, that's the point, right? I mean, uh, you know, uh, multiple choice tests can only take you so far. I mean, the reality, I mean, Jeff over here is busy, you know, one-armed wallpaper hanger with <laughs> updating, the, updating the textbook every year uh, and things like that. If, if, if we're just giving tests to, to folks, goodness gracious, the, the material is going to be irrelevant, um, you know, quick. Uh, when we give them the opportunity to learn how to think properly, through something like a Mimic Pro, th through something like a Mimic Social, we're creating lifelong learners, right? It, wh why did you bid the way that you did? Even when Google Ads changes, you know, as they do so frequently, even when Google Analytics changes so frequently, as you, and you're right, man, it's terrible. Um, <laughs> uh, GA4. Um, they're prepared for that, right? Because they've had to go through a process where they've thought about this kind of stuff. You know, a lot of times in, a, in, a, in an internship, uh, the system can be gamed for or against them. Maybe they worked for a great company that had an outstanding leader that really, really invested in them, and so it made them look really good. Maybe they worked for a company that, you know, COVID hit them really hard or uh, something terrible happened. To, to try, I mean, right now the logistics industry is having a lot of challenges, right? And so some of my kids who have internships in the logistics industry, you know, it's a different game than it was two years ago when the logistics industry was growing, you know, by leaps and bounds. Those kids had different internship opportunities, even though they had the exact same internship. What the simternship allows you to do is to, is, is to learn how to learn. So I'm really excited about continuing with it. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to look at Jeff again, too, because I really liked his statement. I'm, I'm a very practical person, or at least I, I like to think of myself as a very practical person. Theory definitely has its place. I'm probably talking heresy in this room. Um, but, but for me, it's the idea of actually putting into practice what you've learned, right? And the more practice you have, the better you are. I always told my kids growing up that the reason you practice is so you, you are better able to do, perform and do things. They played violin, they played piano, and practice is important. You had to practice to read. You had to practice to do math, all those fundamental things that we do. So there's a, a real concept of practical experience in the classroom. And you know, my background is I, I have an a undergraduate degree in international business, but I, when I started working for Booz Allen in Hamilton, 
I um, really wanted, it was just starting, the, the web was just coming out as a real search tool and, and a, an ability to influence and things like that. And I wanted to get in that field. Well, I started coding Department of Energy and EPA websites on Notepad in HTML because I was familiar with WordPerfect. <laughs> and I didn't have any training. I didn't have any practice. You know, that was it. I'm a doer. I want to be able to go out there and do things. And I think that most of our students are that way too. They're doers. They want to see the results of decisions that they make and then go, oh, no, <laughs> and, and, and re redo it when they can because they can with the STEM term shits. So I'll tell you a little story. Um, theory is lost on students, as far as <laughs> I have found. So I was going through the, uh, the chapter uh, slides and the quizzes, and I was kind of letting them go off on their own on the internship curriculum. And they were just looking at me blankly as I'm trying to walk through some you know, deck I created to help them through it. And I said, you know what? Let's all stop. Everybody, log in. Because we have a laptop policy, so everybody's got a laptop. So I said, log in. Get into your, your internship. Let's, let's do it. And so we did it together. It was the first time I did this. We walked through every single element of the round. And we pulled up the resources. We looked at the spreadsheets. I'm talking about right now the um, consumer behavior uh, one for, for this example. And we walked through the worksheets. We walked through the annual reports. We walked through all of the data. We talked terminology. We talked about... Um, the scenarios, we, we looked at examples. I even built, I even did it with them and I failed on purpose so they could tell me how to correct it. And it, it literally, it switched on something, the light, I, saw, I watched the light come on in these students. And from that point forward, we ran every round together and my sim uh, days were really awesome on attendance. Good attendance, yeah. Awesome. Uh, there's a phrase we use when we talk internships, uh, and it was something that Stu brought up uh, in a meeting when we were, when we were talking like, what, what words do we use to describe simulations, right? And, and one phrase that came up was just-in-time learning, right? H how many of you have had a boss or a department chair or somebody come to you and ask you to do something that you've never done before, right? Like, what did you do? Did you turn back to your textbooks from college or your notes around the theoretical practice something, or did you jump into Google, ask a coworker, right? But it was the fact that you had to learn it to do the job that had actual real world consequence that made it stick, right? And so that's when we talk about simternships, our, our hope when we work with subject matter experts, when we create these is to create the types of situation that foster and encourage and force just in time learning. Oh, it's asking me to calculate return on ad spend. I don't remember what. I don't remember what that is. What's the numerator? What's the denominator? In doing it for something that has consequence, in this case, a simternship score, right? We're hoping to facilitate that just-in-time learning to help make things stick, increase retention, help improve, uh, you know, mastery of the subjects that you are trying to instill in them. All right. Next question. Uh, let's go to. Um, Oh, let's, I like this one. How do the simternships cater to different learning styles and abilities within your class? Um, this one's easy, I think. Uh, my students, like most students, learn by doing. So um, simternships are designed to teach students how to learn by doing, as we've already discussed. Um, I also, I made a note, and I wrote, that. so what I wrote down was increase in joy equals desire to learn equals better grades. Increase the joy. And some internships, I think, increase joy because they get it. Even if they don't do well in a round, they, they're learning something different. They're learning something um, new. They're doing something maybe for the first time. And if you put those low stakes grading or an opportunity, I let them, if they really aren't happy with their grade, I reset it. And I say, let's do it again. Now that you've learned something, let's try it again. So I reset it. I take them back to zero, and I let them go for it one more time. Um, and, and I don't, because I don't really care about how they do, 60%, 100%, I'm much more interested that they get something out of it and they walk away saying, now that was interesting, that was different, that was cool, so. Um, I really think that 
all the various aspects within the symptom chips is really important to identify uh, the different areas of learning, whether you learn by watching or viewing, right? The videos are helpful, the introduction um, to the symptom chip. Every chapter has a different level, a different person, a different discussion. They have to respond to emails. Uh, we all respond to emails in our own life. Um, students hate email. I don't know if you, about you guys, but getting in touch with them is via text now, mostly, pretty much. Um, but it makes them think about in a workplace environment, how am I going to have to operate, right, and understand which of these am I going to pick. Um, then it gets into the analytics and, and, and the numbers. I don't know about you, but my marketing students aren't marketing students because they love numbers. That's not what, you know, right? Um, but I, my, one of my first introductions to all of my marketing classes is, as a marketing student, you will do numbers. Marketing is about numbers. It's not, not just all fun and games, right? Um, and it's becoming increasingly more so as we move through all these different environments. So it's really important. But I think it really, I think these symptomships really touch on all the different aspects of, of learning and different ways to learn, and it does it really well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of the ways that the symptomships help uh, my students, I believe, with different learning styles is that as a card-carrying introvert myself um, that uh, has to prepare for conversations before I have them, I had to, I, you should see my notepad, I have conversations <laughs> planned out in advance. Uh, this is an opportunity for, for folks like me to thrive uh, in, those, in those scenarios. Um, getting an internship uh, for an introvert could be a very challenging thing. It's scary, it's terrifying, especially if you've never done this stuff before. I know. Uh, the frustration that many of us feel if you teach digital marketing is frequently it's it's one of the later classes in your uh, in, in your college career, right? I mean, uh, we we don't we finally got to, to uh, where kids are taking it in their junior year, but what the internship uh, allows those uh, those introverts to do is you know whereas maybe they would struggle in a group project, maybe they would struggle even in a classroom setting. This provides them an opportunity to thrive and to really use those critical thinking skills like we mentioned uh, in order to be successful. Excellent, thank you. Uh, let's jump to, uh, and we'll start with Ryan again. Are there any challenges or limitations you have encountered while integrating a internship into your teaching approach? And if so, how do you address those challenges? Uh, the, the, the biggest uh, perk of the of, of Mimic Pro that I've seen, and and one of the biggest challenges is that uh, is that kids want to win, uh, right? Dr. K talked about this uh, so well. Like we want to win. Competition is fun and everything. One of the biggest challenges, though, is what does winning mean in Mimic Pro? Does it mean having the top ROI? Does it mean having uh, the most conversions? Does it mean you know wh what does it mean? Does it mean highest revenue earned? And so one of the challenges is shifting their thinking into you know, learning how to learn, you're gonna have different clients where your Google Ads campaigns are gonna have different goals to them. If you're in a small business, efficiency is gonna be one of your biggest goals, right? I mean, you've got a set budget and there's only so much you can You Dr. Goolsby runs a, runs a, a coffee shop. She's gonna only have a certain uh, size budget. Whereas with some of the clients that, Ed, you were working with, my goodness, budget, I mean, <laughs> but get as many clicks as you want, spend as much as you want, right? Um, it, it, so the biggest challenge is getting them to shift their thinking of, it's not necessarily about ranking number one in every single area, it's about learning. It's about learning, right? It's about wh why, why did I succeed? It's not just about succeeding, it's about why did I succeed? It's not just about failing, it's about why did I fail? And so that's been one of the biggest challenges is, is shifting their thinking from, yes, I want you to win, absolutely stinking lootly, I want you to win. <laughs> Caught myself almost in a bad word there. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely, I want you to win. But I, more than that, I really want you to learn. I want you to learn why you did poorly. I want you to learn why you did uh, great. The, the, the worst thing that could happen in a STEM internship to me is that you succeed, you get number one, and you have no idea why you did it. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely true. Yeah, that, that's a great point. Um, I would say from a personal perspective, from a professor, professor perspective, the diff difficult thing for me is putting too much into the class. I want the students to do everything, right? I want it all. Um, and, and sometimes that doesn't go so well with my evals. There was too much this, well, okay, you know. So understanding and looking and keeping what's important and what's not. Um, for me, the internships are important. 
Um, it's a very practical experience. It's a very interactive experience, and, and I think the students learn a lot from it. So it's basically adjusting my program so that I can fit that in because it has become that, that important in the class. So there are inherent challenges for the students. We should have asked this at the beginning. How many of you have not done some internships in your curriculum yet? Oh, just a few. Okay. Okay, that's interesting to know. So um, when I first did the internships, I thought I was pretty cool. I could just skim on through and take, run the class, and everything would be fine. And it turns out you got to do the internship like you're a student. Just heads up if you haven't done it. Um, mistake number one, um, and then I got called out for that, so that was no joy on this part. <laughs> yeah, so one of the things that, that I, I, what I felt my biggest challenge as, a, as an instructor was, uh, and this is no, no shade to Stu Kent, but I need materials. I'm not good at teaching from a handbook, okay? So I not only did this internship from the lens of the student, but I also did screenshots and created slide decks all along the way, not to give them the answers, but to um, have them something to walk through. And then I use those decks to actually teach the simulation in real time. And, and so my biggest challenge was lack of resources. And that's already been shared with students, so they're aware of that. As a, Just like we have the chapter uh, slide decks, I created simulation slide decks. Um, and that's just, for me, that's made um, a, a, just a totally big game changer for how I teach and then how I am confident in the material that I am supporting them on. Excellent. You know, Rebecca has shared th this feedback with our, her team, with, with our team, and we've, we're, we're talking through a lot of what those resources could and should look like. Uh, at Stu Kent, when we talk about providing you with resources, right, and fulfilling our mission to help educators, help students, help the world, it's, it's that type of feedback that helps us innovate, right? H how can we make, how can, re how can we enable you as a professor by reducing your administrative burden, right? How can we help you better facilitate the, the, the simternship? How can we better facilitate in-class discussion around what the students did in the simulation? And so as you have that feedback, um, you know, we are uh, more than, uh, you know, more than open ears, right? We are ready, we are ready to take that, that type of feedback and do what we can to, to improve our products and make it easier for you to implement them into your classroom and really have the impact that, that, that we see, right? Like we, we have a vision for how these are gonna impact the classroom, but you're the ones that are there getting your hands dirty with the students, so that feedback is so beneficial to us as, as, as a company. Canvas integration, what's up? What's up, Canvas integration? <laughs> Excellent. Okay, next question. Let's move into, uh, so based on your experience, do you believe that simternships adequately prepare students for real world professional environments? Why or why not? So when I, when I saw this question on the, on the cheat sheet for today's prep, um, my immediate answer is, is actually no, not in a bubble. I think that the simternships combined with the reading, combined with the quizzes and the case studies and the assignments and the in-class activities and discussion and all of the things that students experience as part of their learning profile, I think the simternships are an anchor point for that. But do they alone prepare them? Probably not. I think it's a suite of things that need to, to go with it and I think what why I am such an ambassador for Stukent is because I believe that the suite of materials that is provided to a, an instructor and to the students is what prepares them for that next step. Real quick on that, when we look at, uh, again, developing the courseware in this internship, it is to, uh, we're building it for you as an educator to be that subject matter expert and facilitate, right? Most of the products we create are still for that uh, instructor-led, facilitated subject matter expert uh, piece. It isn't a standalone simternship to give to a student. That's all you're gonna need to know to go and do digital marketing, right? Th there's so many more things that come from you, come from the courseware. And so I love that, I love that, I love that answer, Rebecca, because when we look at building products, it is how can we give that hands-on experience knowing that the teaching is gonna happen 
thanks to you, thanks to the courseware, thanks to other resources that are included in the product. I was like drawing an infographic of how it all <laughs> It's awesome. Um, I agree. I, I like to be in the middle because then I can agree really easily. <laughs> um, but but I, I would also say that it's a tool, right? Um, and another phrase that I really love is no plan survives first contact. So I think we all know that no matter how well you plan for something, it, you can't plan for it. Something's gonna come out, hit you on the side of the head and you're done, right? Or at least you have to pivot. And so the ability for students to kind of at least see the situations that they may find themselves in, to have a grasp of that, right? Um, is, is really, really helpful, like I said, in building their confidence, building their, their faith and their ability, and their, their ability to pivot when they need to, because they have those tools in their toolkit to be able to do that. Yeah, Re Rebecca's spot on uh, with what she says. It's, it's, it's part of the suite. Um, so for example, um, my students get, a, uh, get the intermediate Google Ads certification prior to uh, doing their SIM internship. Um, yeah, good. It, 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 it helps prevent some questions, and it also, uh, when they run into a problem with the SIM internship that I just don't understand why X happened, and they're really frustrated about why they didn't perform the way that they should, it gives you permission to say, I don't know either. Um, and and, and it, it gives you, you don't have to be the sage on the stage. It has all the answers uh, on that. Uh, you get to say, I don't know, and it helps you move past that. So it's, it's part of a suite of services, um, and, and it gives you permission to, to not know. Can I take one more? Please, yeah. Okay. Okay. I, get a, I get to catch it on the way it's over. <laughs> um, one thing that I'm going to add to what Ryan said is that I actually do require my students to do internships. Like if we're covering um, search ads or whatever, they do the Google search ads certification, and then they do their simulation. And it's just that a second layer, right, of instruction in addition to what we're covering in class. But then they graduate and they have a whole list of certifications that no one else had, and they were free. I mean, you know, I mean, when a, we're coming from a private school and we have first generation college students and I was a first generation college student and paid my way through the George Washington University. So I know how difficult it is, right, to come out with loans and having to pay them back and things like that. So having those certifications just give those students a head up at the end. And like I said, it's a tool. It's part of a suite that you have to have. I just wanted to add one, one comment. So maybe some of you can relate to me. I, uh, WSU Pullman is in a really rural community. We are not, we are on the other side of the state from Seattle, so like 270 plus miles. Then there's Spokane that's an hour and a half north. Um, so we're like in this little bubble. There's not a lot of commerce. So to bring in real clients yeah. is a real challenge. Service learning is something that we do, but when you're an instructor who has a 4-4 plus a grant plus an administrative appointment plus four children, I don't want to manage a lot of real clients. Sorry. It's just, it's for me, and my, my level of um, perfectionism is a real problem because I don't want the students to deliver work product that sucks. Yeah. So I end up redoing their work, which I know I shouldn't do. So I just don't want to do it. Is, I think my main message here. So I think the SIM internships replace some of that, that provides that real world experience in the classroom in a simulated environment that at least gives them something that isn't maybe the stress of a real world client. And I've also found with real clients that I'll have two groups that, that have a great client who's really engaged and really supportive, and then I've got one that never calls them back, and I got another one who's making them cry, and so the sim internships, there's not a lot of tears. <laughs> there's a few tears. I've had a couple tears, but not as many tears. So yeah. So anyway, that's just an adding that. Excellent. Uh, so we've got uh, we've got about seven minutes left. I want to open it up for questions to the audience, if if there are any. If not, we have a couple more uh, questions up on on the board. But does anybody have any questions for the panel? Go ahead, Kyle. Um, 
Re real quick, I'll repeat the question. Uh, so sim days in the classroom, how do you facilitate that uh, virtually with virtual classes? Okay, so like I said, I created the deck. So I have a deck for every round. And so we start at the beginning and we go through the prompts, we go through the inbox. We, if I have time, I'll have them watch the video. Depends, if there's a video. We go through the inbox, we go through each of the, each of the steps. We pull up the data, we walk through the data. I quiz them on, um, you know, informally, but I quiz them on the terminology that they're seeing. How do we interpret the data? Um, we look at the prompts that they're supposed to do, whatever the activity is, and I say, so what would you do? Sometimes in, in the in-person, I have them chat amongst themselves in a group, and then they report out. On virtual, I would, I could break it, I could put them in breakout rooms. Um, I, but be, be, what is my saving grace is the decks, because the decks walk them through each of the phases, plenty of time for questions, um, plenty of time for, for, thing, for me to show them, because I just create like a, like a fake, I'm like a fake student in my space. So I just fail all over the place and don't care, and let them figure out why I made the mistake and, why, and, and correct it, so. I do it live, all of it. I go live, yeah, yeah. Any other questions from the audience? Excellent, we'll finish with this final question. Um, hey, wait, oh, yes. Can I share something? Yes, please. If there's a moment, uh, I don't mean to steal stage, so I apologize, I'll, I'll be brief. Yesterday I had a great conversation with Katie in, from Arizona State. And Kate was um, sharing feedback. She said, you know, you said something that I would, I, I took a little issue with, and if you don't mind, I'd like to share my thoughts. And I said, okay, let's hear it. She said, well, you said that it's kind of on the educator that we're not doing, uh, that students aren't reading, that we need to do a better job of helping students want to read. She said, I, I know, I think that students want, do want to read, but we have to give them incentives to read. That could be content that's enjoyable to read, for one. <laughs> and I said, okay, we can do better there, for sure. And, and I, she said, but also, like, uh, they want to go Google stuff, and they'll read what's in the Google results. When they need information, they go get it. So what I love about what she was saying is that Sim internships give you an incentive to want to go learn so you can perform well in the Sim internship. That just-in-time learning approach that Brady mentioned earlier is, it's a, very, it's a very real thing that we've all experienced in our own lives. And, um, you know, my goal for our business is that we can keep doing a better job of tying Sim internship and courseware in such a way that you can go get the right information, know easily how to find the right information from the courseware to go do well in SIM. And in turn, we're like tricking them into reading at that point, right? It's kind of like uh, educational video games kind of theory, so. Was um, what kind of feedback you've received from your students regarding uh, their experience in the SIM internship, and have they found it valuable um, and beneficial for their learning journey? And that mic is louder than this mic, so be careful, loud talker. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, as, as I mentioned uh, in my first answer, it's it's uh, overwhelmingly positive. I'm sure you, you you get the folks who who don't want to do stuff. That that happens to all of us, but it's it's overwhelmingly positive. Uh, it, it gives them hands-on learning opportunity. The doers get to do uh, to learn stuff. The researchers get to research stuff. Um, you know, the competitive folks get to, to compete with one another. Uh, it's, it's a really universal opportunity for different types of learners. Awesome. Um, in preparation for this, Ooh, we have quotes. Swap it back. I think I've oh, I've got, got it. it. Never mind. I I touched the bottom. Sorry. Um, that reminds me of Finding Nemo when they touch the butt. Um, but anyway, sorry. Way off topic. Um, 
the, I, I would say that every semester, you know, I look at my evals, and that's always a painful process. I don't know about you, but it's like the last thing I want to do is look at my evals. I get good evals in general, right? But it's still like, oh. Um, and every semester in any class that we did the simulation, the majority of the comments are what you learn, where did you learn most in this class was the simulation. Right, um, and and I I've realized that that has really become fun. We talked about edutainment earlier, right? This is really edutainment in many ways. It's a game for them. They 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 think it's a game. I think it's real life practical experience. It doesn't matter. They get the same information. Um, I'll share one quote with you since I have them here. Um, it says, uh, the aspects involving money allocation and deciding where to put the budget was very valuable. It gave us a choice to carefully decide what aspect overall to choose. I don't quite remember the features there, uh, but I remember stressing about where I would be putting my budget in, into. And so they really start, you know, our students are budget conscious. Well, in some aspects, Starbucks doesn't enter into the equation, but in some, you know, and so understanding that, that it's not their money that they're using, it's someone else's money, and, and it's important to be able to allocate it effectively to, to manage a project, and, and I think that really resonates with them significantly. I'll close out with a quote. After working in social media marketing for eight years, I thought I knew a lot of what could be known about social media and the tricks of social marketing. However, using the simulation was a real eye-opener for all the options that are out there for social media marketing. Eight years. Excellent. Well, let's give our panelists a round of applause. <laughs> thanks for your time, energy, your, your preparation. And, and again, I, thanks to all of you as, as educators who are here, who are looking for ways to continue to engage students, provide opportunities for them to learn, practice, and really gain the skills necessary to make a difference in the workforce. So I applaud all of you, and thanks for thanks for being here. And uh, we'll uh, we'll wrap up this this session. Thanks. <laughs>